Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. A Florida school bans student-initiated prayer. Alabama school allows celebration of Easter. Washington State sues a florist who refused to celebrate homosexual marriage. And California is trying to remove the Boy Scouts tax-exempt status. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus' Name show. We have the fastest half hour in Christian television because we do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray with us? Let's get right to our first story. This comes to us from the St. Augustine Record in Florida, who reports St. John's County won't let students pray at a high school graduation ceremony. And this is even after the Florida legislature last year passed a law that says student-initiated prayer is okay. The issue came up after a local group of residents last month asked the district school board to take advantage of a 2012 state statute allowing students at assemblies to give inspirational messages. Some specifically asked that a prayer be allowed at a graduation ceremony. But the school district attorney, Frank Upchurch, at a board workshop last week said it was his advice that the board be prudent on taking the lead in adopting such a policy, pointing to constitutional issues and practical considerations. Whatever school district initiates the policy will find itself spending money to defend the action, the board said board chairman Tommy Allen. In other words, he's afraid of getting sued, so this board chairman, Tommy Allen, I'm asking if he's a coward because he is not letting the students pray. The district already has received correspondence from the atheist group, Freedom From Religion Foundation, and similar organizations indicating lawsuits will be filed if they hear a student say a prayer. The Florida legislature, however, will not defend the law. They've allowed the schools to do this, but they won't defend the law if the schools are sued. So the school districts have to uh, make that legal defense. In an attempt to get a provision adding a requirement for the state to defend the school district, uh, that was challenged and that failed. So no other school district has adopted this. If we did adopt it, Alan said, we'd have to take a stand. Heaven forbid you'd have to take a stand for the free speech of your students, Mr. Allen. If we do adopt it, then we will have to take money out of the classroom to defend. Is that good or bad? We can't do anything as far as I see it, said Allen. Statute 1001.432 was passed into law last year by the Florida legislature. And under that law, a school board may adopt a policy of allowing an inspirational message to be delivered by students at a student assembly. In other words, it's okay for students to say a prayer. Whatever districts decide to adopt the inspirational message can expect lawsuits, complained the atheists in a letter to their lawyer Upchurch. The board that first passes this policy is asking for a lawsuit, said Freedom From Religion Foundation Andrew Seidel. He's their lawyer. He said the foundation distributes scholarships and awards. Now get this, the atheists are giving scholarships and they would publicize the awards if this policy were adopted to incentivize a free thought message that discourages prayers. Did you catch that? The atheists are giving money to schools who promote atheist speeches and discourage Christian speeches. So they got their finger on the scale now, they're promoting state atheism and they're giving a monetary reward to do this. If a student did choose to prayer, he warned, that would suggest pressure from faculty or religious adults and enforce the, reinforce the history of the bad policy that allows people to pray. That's the news from St. Augustine record. Now, let's discern the spirits for a minute. Uh, did you catch that? The atheist group is complaining that if there's a free speech policy that allows Christian prayers, well, that must be because of pressure from religious parents. But if there's 
a policy that allows atheist speeches, well, that's a good thing because we're offering money to incentivize the free thought message, the atheist message, and we're offering money to discourage prayers. Well, wait a minute, aren't they the ones who are pressuring the students? Why can't the Christians give an incentive when the atheists are giving a monetary incentive to promote atheism? I'll tell you what we're gonna do right here on this show, we're gonna make news today because I and the Pray in Jesus Name Project, we are offering a thousand dollar reward to any high school student in St. John's County, Florida, who says the Our Father, the prayer that Jesus prayed in Matthew 5, or offers a public prayer that ends in Jesus name over the school microphone at your graduation ceremony. If you're a student who does this, we'll give you a thousand dollar scholarship reward. I'll write a check, you can use it to pay for your tuition. Wait a minute, what did he just do? Am I incentivizing, am I pressuring students to say a religious prayer? You bet, you bet I am. Just like the atheists are doing, now we're gonna do the same thing. And if they want to sue the school district, I pray that you would call Tommy Allen and force him and ask him if he's a coward. Tommy Allen, I'm asking you to stand up for your students' religious freedom. And I'm encouraging my people to call your office today at 904-547-7500. Again, that phone number is 904-547-7500. I pray we ring the phones off of your hook and I pray that you stand up to defend religious freedom. Because I think some student in your high school is gonna have more courage than the cowardly superintendent of schools. Here's what the Bible says about this in Revelation 21. The Bible says the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, murderous, sexual immoral, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Did you know cowardice is a ungodly trait that can get people thrown into hell? I'm just saying, I'm not saying anybody is gonna be that, I'm just saying what the Bible says. Now let's pray about that. Let's pray for a spirit of courage to rise up in these students. Father in heaven, we pray that you will bless every student in that high school, in that entire county in St. John's County, Florida, where they are being oppressed by their own supervisor whose policy contradicts state law and his policy is to forbid students to pray at a public microphone, Father, bless the student who stands up in courage to pray in Jesus' name or recite the Lord's Prayer on his graduation day at the school microphone. Father, I pray that you will uh, send us the donors, I'm doing this by faith, that we'll be able to pay that thousand dollar reward in the coming year. We pray this blessing in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, an Alabama school allows students to celebrate Easter. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court-martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll-free, at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus' Name show. And again, we're gonna report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures together in Jesus' name. Our next story again comes to us from the Liberty Institute blog, which reports an Alabama school district has rescinded their ban on students celebrating Easter. Last month, an Alabama elementary school principal banned the word Easter as illegal speech. He did that in the interest of religious diversity. But the ban included a cancellation of the school's Easter egg hunt for kindergarten and second grade students. According to WHNT, Linda Davenport, the principal 
of Heritage Elementary School told teachers, no activities related to or centered upon any religious holiday would be allowed in the interest of religious diversity. You're kidding, right? That's like the opposite of religious diversity. Upset by the ban, concerned parents contacted the Liberty Institute. So Hiram Sasser, the director and attorney for litigation, said clearly established Supreme Court precedent prohibits schools from censoring religious speech of students and parents. In addition, there is no case that exists that bans school officials from using the word Easter to describe the Easter holiday or cultural activities associated with it. After a public outcry, Madison City School Superintendent D. Fowler, D. Fowler made the decision to lift the ban, allowing students to participate in a planned Easter egg hunt. Teachers and school administrators are so afraid of lawsuits that they hastily placed bans on any religious activity or speech, especially around the holidays. These bans are based on misinformation campaigns, usually originating from groups like the Freedom From Religion Foundation or the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, ACLU. So that's the news as reported by these other uh, Christian organizations, the Liberty Institute blog. I pray for you, Hiram Sasser, and your legal work and everyone on your team. Uh, let me encourage you, listen, I, the, the background for Easter, we gotta try and discern the spirits a little bit here, right? I know that the word Easter may not have a Christian origin, but the concept is Resurrection Day. When Jesus was raised from the dead, that he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that's certainly worthy of celebration, not just at Christmas when Christ was born, but on Easter when we celebrate the risen Christ, that Jesus, having been crucified for our sins, is actually raised from the dead. And I'm not into bunny rabbits and, and Easter eggs. I don't know if there's a Christian symbolism there that I'm not uh, up to speed on, but a lot of those little plastic eggs, if you open them up, they're empty inside, and that can symbolize the empty tomb. And I encourage you to think about Christ, think about the empty tomb, because I went to Jerusalem, I stood in the garden tomb, and I looked into the grave, and you know what, there's no body there. It says in Mark 16, here's a quote from the angel, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified, he has risen, he is not here see the place where they laid him. I think, therefore, the Holy Spirit is the one who inspires children to think about the risen Christ and to celebrate that religious diversity even in public schools. God bless the courageous, the Holy Spirit inspired superintendent of schools who rebuked the demonic teacher who said Easter is evil. We can't talk about that, that's an illegal word. Well, who are you but the devil? We call you out and we invite the Holy Spirit to rebuke you and replace you in Jesus' name. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, we pray for religious liberty for all of our students in all the schools, not just in Alabama, but in Florida, and in California, in uh, Massachusetts, around the country where student liberty is being oppressed by tyrannical government. Father, we pray you would give them their First Amendment freedom of religious diversity and to express their faith and not to punish any one student who would speak out. We pray this blessing upon America. God bless America with religious liberty for our students. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, when we come back, we're gonna talk about Washington State now suing a florist, why? Because he wouldn't celebrate homosexual marriage. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. 
How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I pray that you will donate. We need $1,000 to issue that reward as I did courageously at the beginning of this show to encourage any student in the St. John's County, Florida district to say a prayer at your graduation ceremony. Pray in Jesus' name, say the Our Father, we'll, we'll fund your scholarship. Our next story comes to us from Political Outcast blog and they're, they're reporting that Washington State, the government, is now suing a florist, a Christian florist, because that Christian florist refused to help celebrate a homosexual wedding. The hero of this story, Baronel Stutzman, is taking a stand, and she has owned Arlene's Flowers in Richmond, Washington for a number of years. She's taken business from all kinds of people and all kinds of backgrounds, including homosexuals. And in fact, she's hired employees who have worked at her florist shop who are also homosexual. So this is not about discrimination in employment, but one of Stutzman's longtime customers is Robert Ingersoll. And she had no issue with him being gay or even providing him flowers on various occasions in the past. But all that changed when he demanded she provide flowers to his homosexual wedding to his gay partner, Kurt Freed. The Christian woman explained she's a Christian and that she has a moral objection to be able to place that order to help send flowers to help him celebrate his homosexual wedding, quote unquote wedding. Reports indicate that he told her that he respected her opinion, and the two friends embraced in a hug and Imbersol went on his way. But then later, uh, Stussman believed the issue was over and she went, out her, about her, went about her business selling flowers and then she received a legal notice that she was being sued by the Washington State Attorney General on charges of sexual discrimination. So now she's being sued? For what? For refusing to violate her conscience. That's the story from the blog that I mentioned. Let's take a moment to discern the spirits here. Okay. We believe because the Bible teaches that holiness comes from the Holy Spirit, that sin is a temptation of the demonic spirits. We believe that homosexuality, although some people think it's genetic, there's no evidence of that. What we believe is that it's a spiritual choice that when people do this, they consent to invite the demonic spirit to take over and control their, their mind and their heart with lust. The, the demon of lust, and it's no different than heterosexual lust or adultery or uh, pedophilia, any kind of lust that is outside of traditional marriage between one man and one woman is not blessed by God. And God commands that sex is uh, reserved to be reserved for marriage between one man and one woman. So when this Christian hero takes a stand and she says, you know what, I, I love you people, but I'm not gonna help you celebrate because that would violate my conscience, then she, I believe, is filled with the Holy Spirit. She is manifesting sexual purity, not just in her own practice, but in her business and in her choice to never violate her conscience. That is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And why do I say that? Because the Bible says in Job 27 and verse six, I will maintain my innocence and never let go of it. My conscience will not reproach me as long as I live. And Baronel, we, we applaud you for taking this stand and we're gonna pray for you right now. Father in heaven, we pray for a, re, a victory in this court. And we pray that you would step down and oppose the government tyranny that would stop Christian conscience from choosing who we celebrate and who we send our flowers to. God, we pray in Jesus' name that you will give religious liberty to every business person in the state of Washington. That even as uh, the devil tries to come and force us to violate our conscience, 
that the Spirit of God would rise up, because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. The Spirit of God would rise up in this courageous woman, Farron L. Stutzman, and give her victory in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a California bill to penalize the, the Boy Scouts. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's get right to our last story for today. This comes to us from the Capital Resource Institute, and they're reporting a new California law would remove the Boy Scouts tax exemption if they don't embrace homosexual scout leaders. California's SB 323 came one step closer to becoming law of the Golden State as the bill easily passed out of the, the California Senate Governance and Finance Committee. Should SB 323 become law, it would break new ground in using the tax system to punish those who are disliked by the homosexual activists. In other words, punish the Christians for exercising their faith. SB 323 would remove certain state tax exemptions from public charity youth organizations if they discriminate on the basis of gender identity, race, sexual orientation, nationality, religion, or religious affiliation. But in today's committee hearing, the proponents of the claim the bill would not affect youth programs that are organized under the structure of a religious body. So the Boy Scouts, who are an inherently religious organization as determined by the Supreme Court, if they meet at a local Presbyterian church, then they're off the hook, they don't need to comply with this new California law. But if the same scout troop has their meeting next door at the community center, then they would lose their tax exemption if it restricts who can be a troop leader. So the oddity is that it leads to the description of the proposed law as proudly promoting state treatment that is separate but unequal. The club that determines that a homosexual man should not be the leader of its young boys is now determined, the Christians are determined so heinous that the organization ought to be punished into conformity by more taxation. But if the youth group meets in a church, never mind, it's okay. In allowing such an exemption, the proponents implicitly admit that the state should show tolerance for mem different membership of leadership policies. But the target of this bill is the Boy Scouts and the com committee's official analysis says it's clearly aimed at them, but it affects much wider audience than that. SB 323 requires that youth sports leagues allow children of any gender to participate on any team. But the state now intends to reach beyond the playing field and into its locker rooms showers and bathrooms also. The bill's prohibition on gender identity is based on discrimination, meaning that a boy who's confused and thinks he's a girl, he's confused about his gender, should be allowed to share the girl's locker room with the girls. Any attempt at segregation risks a fine in the form of new taxes. So that's the news, let's discern the spirits for a moment. I discern that there is, again, a recruiting attempt by California, not only to recruit children, but to homosexualize the Boy Scouts, which are a Christian organization, why? So that they can put, honestly, child molesters and pedophiles and people who want to be recruiters of young children into positions of authority 
if it's not inside the church, at least it's within a Christian organization like the Boy Scouts that are organized with their scouting motto to remain straight and morally pure. That is part of their uh, motto and I think we ought to be able to protect the Boy Scouts and defend their religious freedom as the Supreme Court has ruled their religious organization. It doesn't matter if they meet in a church or if they meet in the community center. The people are still Christians and their parents are Christians. They don't get to be penalized for being Christians. This is a religious liberty issue at its heart. Here's a scripture from Luke 17. It'd be better for him if a millstone, this is talking about child molesters and pedophiles, to have a millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea than it would be to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will give liberty to the Boy Scouts to protect their freedom from this heinous California law. Stop the molesters from coming in and destroying our religious freedom and our children. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take one last break. I'll preview tomorrow's show. Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. On tomorrow's show, we're gonna discuss President Obama is now appointed three new homosexual judges. North Korea may be giving nuclear tipped missiles to Iran to help destroy Israel. President Obama already gave new F-16s to Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. And finally, the Indonesian government is now destroying Christian churches. These are four important stories we're previewing for tomorrow's show. Please tune in this same channel tomorrow. God bless you in Jesus' name. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.